Okay. Can you record the Zoom? Council meeting. <laughs> it's Tuesday, February 6, 2024, at 7 p.m. So yeah. um, here at the Star City Hall at 7:01 p.m. We do have some system issues, folks. Just so you're aware, so they are going to go print out a bunch of the documents for us. We're going to start out with the first part of our council meeting that we have to get done anyway, and then we may have to just take a recess for a few minutes until they get the documents back here. Just so everybody's aware. Okay. If Mary, you can take things out of order if you need to. If there's other things you can, can accomplish before them, so you don't have to go exactly in this oh, order. So, yeah. the action items you can take first. Like okay, sounds good. Uh, can you all please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. All right, thank you. And then we have Mr. Harold Wiley here. <coughs> oh, you're filling in. Okay, Councilman Wheel, I said give our invocation tonight. Our Father in Heaven, we're grateful for the opportunity we have to be gathered as a city council and, and grateful for the opportunity to live in this community that is growing. We're grateful for those that serve and protect our rights and pray that as we work through the growth that we'll be able to make wise decisions, that we'll be able to continue to grow as a community that has the small town feel that we are all striving to enjoy. We're grateful for those that sacrifice for our freedoms and pray that they will be blessed and looked after. We're grateful for the opportunity we have to meet here tonight and pray that we'll have civility and, and good judgments in those opportunities. And we say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So just as a reminder, please silence yourself. It breaks it up. He's new here. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on to uh, roll call, please. Roll call. David Hershey. Here. Devin Wheelock. Here. Trevor Chapman. Here. Jennifer Salins. Here. Devin Nielsen. Okay, we have uh, no presentation tonight. We're going to move on to item five, the consent agenda. Uh, I move that we approve the consent agenda consisting of item 5A, the findings of fact, conclusion of law for Mel Alden, and then the claims of approval. Okay, we got a motion, we have a second. Do you want to second that, or are you just not going to approve it? I'll second. Okay, so we got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Uh, Mayor Shadow, since I wasn't here for Mel Olive, I should probably not comment on it. Okay, but the others. Please, yes. All right, I guess so when so when uh, Jacob, when they vote, he's voting on everything but the middle wall. I just want to hear. Okay? Thanks. All right, you can figure that one out. All right, any further comments? Okay, here we roll call. Hershey. Aye. Wheelock. Aye. Nielsen. Aye. Salinson. Aye. Sorry, I just skipped. All right, that motion carries. Thank you. We're going to move on to item actually 6C. Um, this is a public hearing that needs to be tabled to March 5th, 2024. Um, so I can entertain a motion to table that till then. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Councilman 
First, I make a motion that we table the public hearing for the mile post common subdivision to the 5th of March 2024. Okay, we have a motion, do we have a second? Very second. Councilman uh, Nielsen. Second the motion. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Hershey. Aye. Wheelock. Aye. Salmonson. Aye. Nielsen. Aye. All right, that motion carries. All right, we're going to, uh, I'm sorry, it is 7.05, and uh, because we're waiting for these items to be printed out so people have them in front of them, uh, we're going to uh, uh, take a recess. I'm sorry, 7.06. How are you going to get on the screen? All right, we're going to take a recess at 7.06 <laughs> until 7.10 so we get everything set up. However, they plan on doing this This is just good information for you guys. Just like four years ago, we could have about 300 pages each. Have to look at. Wow. We love technology when it works, right? When it works. Now try it. I may need to switch this.
All right, it's going to go a little bit longer than yes, 710. Would you please? So we get this up. Close though. We're, we're very close, Mr. Marianne. Please just give us a few minutes. Hey, Corey, can you go see if Nielsen's going to be available? Because we'll start the first one with that if he's not available. He's in the foyer. Don't hurry up with this first thing. I'm going to you guys just don't have it there, right? You're gonna have it here. Oh, you, you don't, right? No, but yes, we do. Oh, you do? Yeah, it's showing up every time. Oh, it's all everything. Yeah, from here. After all. <laughs> I have a plug in the wall, so it's not all oh, the wall. Oh, it's not all the wall. Oh, it's some rules uh, when we're doing public hearings, and I'm just going to make sure everybody understands them. Uh, you have, if you want to speak at the public hearing, unless you're the applicant, you need to sign up at the back uh, out in the hallway there. I will open the public hearing and ask the council if they have any ex parte contact or communication. The applicant has up to 20 minutes to present their project. The council can ask the applicant questions and staff questions during that time frame as well. Public testimony is three minutes per person. Uh, yeah, the council can ask you questions. That doesn't uh, take away from your three minutes. It'll look extended if they ask you questions during your presentation. I mean, during your uh, your uh, testimony. The applicant will then have ten minutes of rebuttal. The council will ask the applicant staff questions. I'll close the public hearing. The council is going to deliberate. Either they can make a motion to approve, approval conditions, deny, or table the application to a date certain in the future. So with that said, I am going. It is seven. Uh, uh, we'll call it seven fourteen. It's almost there. Uh, I'm going to open the public hearing on the Keeley CUP and ask the council if they have any ex parte contact or communication. No. Okay, hearing none, I'm going to turn it over to the staff. Uh, Sean, you ready? <laughs> Swear, thank you. <clears throat> Mayor and Council, tonight we've got uh, two public hearings. The first one is uh, a rezoning conditional use permit for uh, Keeley. It's a rezone from R1 to CBD uh, DA, the development agreement, and a conditional use permit for a live work development. The property is located at 556 South Star Road. Total acreage of the property is 0.9 acres. Uh, 856. 856. 856, sorry. Uh, South Star Road, thank you. Um, comprehensive plan designation for this property is Central Business District. Rezone from R1 to uh, CBD DA. Initial use permit is for four residential apartment units above four commercial units. 
Uh, the application uh, submittal requirements have been met for this uh, application. Uh, agency transmittals, uh, legal notices, site closing have all been completed in compliance with the UDC requirements. Uh, the application has been reviewed for compliance with the comprehensive plan and zoning ordinance. Uh, late exhibits, you have a letter from, an updated letter from our city engineer in front of you. Uh, outstanding, outstanding, outstanding items for discussion tonight are approved uh, commercial uses within the development and future development of the existing dwelling. Staff is recommend, recommending approval with conditions. Again, located uh, on South Star Road. Clear rail. This is the site plan. Again, the applicants provide some elevation. Councilman Nielsen has a question. Yes, sir. Sean, could you go back to the map and uh -huh. help us locate where that is? Uh, so this is uh, Hercules, right here to the north. This is South Star Road. It's about across the street from the Anytime Fitness. Yeah. That area. A little bit further, a little bit further down on the Main Street. Close to it. Thank you. Okay. And again, the elevations of the. Can you go back to the site plan? Like how hey, hang on. You, so you can't. You can't. You, you can't speak yet. Um, only at the time <laughs> when you come up. That's all. Thank you. These, these are the floor plans for the upstairs uh, apartments and the commercial. Okay. All right. And did they have a presentation, Sean? Well, we will get you what I have. Huh? We will get you the the uh, okay. presentation of information I have. So, Clint, you can come up. Are you speaking, Clint? Yes. Okay, so you come up, state your name and address for the record. And also, just for public awareness, too, when you come up to speak, you need to state your name and address also uh, for the record. So, thank you. Uh, my name is Clint Keeley, 518 South Star Road here in Star. Um, so, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council member, members, for hearing us out on this and for the um, that petition to rezone this and the conditional use permit. But basically what he said is, is all there is. Um, I don't have a presentation or a slideshow. Um, we're asking to rezone a current R1 to be a CBDD, which is currently in the CBD district. Um, we're gonna look at putting uh, a new entrance on the north side of the property that's gonna serve two buildings. Currently one um, we're looking to build. Uh, one will be future, uh, depending on funding and how things work for that. Um, we have the, um, the two bottom on each building. Two bottom would be two retail units, commercial spaces, whether it's office. One will be for Keeley Electric for us there. Uh, we'll be doing warehousing and um, our office space in there. Um, and then the other one will be available for lease while the two apartments above it um, will be available for lease as well. Um, and that's pretty much the basis of our project we're looking to do. Clint, can I, can you just talk to the, your current building that's to the left or to the west of that? Which, oh, the current, yes, currently on the property. Correct, yeah, currently on the property in that, in that little spot right there, there's a residential house. Um, yeah, you can see it, I think. When you get there, right there. So that house is there, it's gonna continue to stay and be used as um, residential for the time being um, and it will be accessed um, ACHD has requested that we close off the existing driveway that is uh, to the south of where we're proposing the new entrance and so the the existing house will become through the north and back behind the house for the entrance to it okay any questions of the applicant at this time yeah so, no, you, so hang on one second so the public can't ask any questions until your time's called to come up to speed. Okay, did you say and then they're not going to, so I just, real quick, I just want to make sure that we, because not everybody's been, you haven't done this, so that's okay, right? But you come up and you stay where you want to stay and you ask the questions, he's not going to answer them right away. They come up and answer them during a rebuttal. Oh. That's the process, just so you're aware of it. Did you sign in back there? Yeah, and if you haven't signed in, go sign in for me. I already collected them. So well, that's all right. Have her sign in on that. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, go, go, uh, any questions of Clint? Mayor 
Councilwoman. Each unit is uh, twenty three fifty. Bottom retail, top it would be twenty three fifty of residential. So forty cents. 47 total. So guys, please do me a favor, please. I, I need a, we need a hold the quorum in here. You guys want to ask the questions, you got to ask them during your time that's up here. I can't emphasize that enough. Okay, we haven't done, you've done it before. So let's please do that at that time. Okay? Councilwoman? So 2350 um, per unit, and then you're at, and then there's a total of four. Is that correct? Uh, no, ma'am. It's, that's uh, 2350 floor space on the, on the lower level, 2350 on the upper level, both split into half. So okay. it's two units, and that's one building. Okay, so then it's about 1,100 square feet per unit for commercial. So if there's four businesses in, in there, they would have about 1,100 square feet to work with each. On, close to. on one, yeah, yeah, correct, on one building. Okay. I'm not great at math, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any further questions of the, of the applicant at this time? Did she get, I just want yes. to, did you get on this? She got it. You did get on that? Okay. Right. Mayor Shepard. Council, uh, Councilman Nielsen. So we, we have this, this late exhibit from Cindy Star talking about some of the things that are not included in the application. Have, have you seen this? I, I believe so. I believe I saw that today in my email. And can you, can you I mean, if you could borrow this if you want, but can you sure. go through and, and talk to these points of sure. the city's calling out? Thank you. So the landscaping plan with tree and shrub, shrub species, um, there may have been uh, something overlooked because the current plan does have a landscaping <coughs> plan. What it does not include is the required trees in the front of the property. So this is not, uh, I can't tell if it has there, but the required trees in the front of the property, um, one per 35 feet, we're, we don't have 35 feet in that piece, but we do have trees, existing trees that's just to the south of that. If that makes sense. Okay. Um, the other one, um, the special flood hazard area, um, we will be complying with that um, as far as making sure we're above the base flood um, and uh, having that. Um, we got a letter from uh, the um, surveyor for our base flood elevation and we will be submitting with that as well for our permit. Um, elevation drawings, they, they have been um, changed. It did show the incorrect, we shifted our buildings um, so I don't know if you have that on there. If you want to look at the, the front elevations, it should show the proper orientation on that, Sean. Um, so that those have this is not the latest drawing. Um, so the top, which is the face elevation, would be the west, and then the bottom it would be the east. Which that's not an issue. You could just label it. All they're saying in this letter. Is it in order to be approved with conditions, you just have to uh, comply to all six of these things. So if that needs to get fixed, I don't know which one that Sean had on his presentation. Because this is Sean's presentation. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, the potable water, uh, for it won't be used for irrigation. We have an existing well on the property that will be used for our irrigation purposes on this. Um, the proposed stormwater, I currently have an engineer doing the stormwater design for us. Um, it did say for floating feather, I, I'm not sure if that meant Star Road or, I, I'm not sure what that, that Ryan Morgan? That should have been Star Road, that is correct. Okay. Apologize. So I do have an engineer designing that currently for our stormwater retention on this. And then the easement, um, it's probably not on his presentation, it's on the thumb drive I gave. I showed the easement. Basically, if you go to that um, site plan again, if you wouldn't mind. Um, basically, it's it's a 20-foot swath through the whole north side of the property. That's going to be a utility easement. Um, city uh, sour sewer and water is requested. We bring um, water main all the way to the east of the property from the west side of Star Road, and currently the um, sewer main on the east side, <coughs> um, east border, is going to come up through and serve the two buildings and the existing house through there, and all that will be in included in that easement. Did I 
did I capture what you were think, looking for? I think you did, yeah. Yeah, yeah thank you. I, I, I am curious on the landscape design, Sean, if, given those limitations you talked about, are there other changes you need to make? Or? No, and again, again uh, Mr. Mayor and Council, this will come back to us through the design review process. So a lot of this will, most of this will be uh, addressed in that. So we make conditions of approval for this. Okay, any further questions of Mr. Platt? Mayor Stadwick. Councilwoman? Um, so, Roka, let's yep, make sorry. sure, just because we don't have it on video, we've got to make sure it gets recorded. So, do you own yeah. that other property that's, that other house that's on this piece? Yes. And do you live there? Or do no. you rent it out? Okay. Um, it's currently rented out. We live um, at 518, five or six houses north. And so I guess I, I'm a little concerned with whoever's in that house if they're okay. And, um, I mean, but so if, there, if there's eventually four businesses in there, um, what type of businesses those would be to, you know, just for the traffic sure. impact I, on that house? The, the future plan will be to take out that house in the front. Um, that will be as we develop the back of the property. And um, the current tenants are um, a short term. They're professional um, travel nurses and things like that. Uh, and then what? Um, so I don't see that you're asking for any specific um, like business uses or uh, what's that term that I'm, I just missed it. Um, what am I looking for? Uses? Yeah, the uses, I guess. The, are you asking for any specific, the ones that are that are um, not already allowed in this area? So I'm not asking or requesting anything that's outside of the current zoning of the CBD within that. Um, one will right now be an office warehouse for uh, an electrical shop for us. And the other one, whatever, whoever is going to lease that would be within the, I don't know, there's office, there's some retail spaces. Um, we're going to sign a 20-year um, agreement with Star City, our sewer and water, to not have a restaurant in there. So there won't be a restaurant. But we're not, I, we wouldn't go outside of the already approved uses. Okay, because I, I was going through that list and there's a couple in there that I was like, well, I don't think that that would fit. For example, a bar. Oh. <laughs> you know, like, so sure. I don't know if we... Well, I think through. the bar, restaurant thing, all is the same i think that would be in our in our um maybe it's in the DA waiver for this yeah that we can put, you know, the, the waiver is basically that we're not putting in a grease trap a, a, a grease trap it's, it's a sewer and water thing so <clears throat> ryan can talk to it if you need to okay would you just explain a grease trap ryan so a grease interceptor is a typically they're a thousand gallon concrete vault that have baffles and grease that as the water flows through, the grease sits on top. And because grease floats in water, it is not, it, it won't flow through the rest of the pipe. Because what happens is grease and oils and fats are extremely difficult on any sanitary sewer system. And so we put these greasy interceptors in to keep those greases and fats on the property and then they come and they pump those out every six months every year depending on whatever is needed uh, when you're doing and, and that's fairly typical for most jurisdictions throughout the, the, the nation when you have a restaurant or some other um, commercial use that's going to produce oils fast greases so where he's claiming that that won't ever be a restaurant or a bar or something like that, um, we can we, we will probably end up waiving that requirement. So would that apply for like a um, auto repair shop? Like, is there some? Do you need some sort of trap for auto repair? Yes. Yeah. So anything that requires that, they wouldn't be able to put back there with the agreement with source and water. Okay. And so the the the. Um, the businesses that you anticipate to use a space would, would be um, like professional and personal services? That's what I would anticipate. Um, I, I would anticipate maybe another contractor coming in. I would anticipate maybe um, a salon or something in there. Um, 
just nothing, I guess nothing that would be what you would consider like, re uh, um, sorry, a bar or restaurant. I guess if, if that makes sense. Okay, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Any further questions? Yes, Mayor. Councilor Wheelock. I, I uh, thought it looked nice generally for what I could see. The, the question I had was uh, trash with four businesses back there in the future. Do you have a, a plan to have one central location, cans all the way to the road? Thank what's, you. What's that look like because it's not on the drawings anymore? Right, it would be um, at the end, um, if you can go to that site plan again, it would be, if you if you come to the south of the property between the two buildings, there would be a spot for the dumpsters there. And it would be a, a single point pickup from Republic. That's, that's kind of what I was curious about. No, we're not going to have 20 cans up there. The picture, so I use that's a great question, thank you. Okay, any further questions on the applicant? At this time, okay, hearing none, thank you, Mr. Plant. Thank you. And then we'll go to the public testimony. Ms. Heidi, it's your turn. With who? With who? <laughs> <laughs> okay. We got it. So, everybody's, we also have the clock up on the wall here that shows you your timing. Uh, my name is Heidi Purdy. I live at 208 South Main here in Star. I apologize for blurting, but I'm a blurter. That's why I try not to come to meetings anymore. Um, I get, so I understand the commercial thing and I embrace that because that's what's happening. My concern is always lighting. I, I'm always anticipating that the lighting could be reduced by 10 p.m. because we are pr still predominantly a residential neighborhood. Until we become more predominantly commercial, that's where we're at. And then the other thing, which is a pet peeve, is whatever that front elevation is, if it could be wrapped around the back because everybody on Main Street, which I think is going to be the focal point of the CBD district is looking at that and <clears throat> so all these neighbors who no longer see the sunset whatever that back elevation looks like if it could look as good as the front do you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. yep. that's okay. my thing thank you thank you did you so just before I have you sit down though you're gonna say something I just want to make sure you get it out if you were gonna say something <laughs> I was actually not blurting to you, I was blurting to them. Okay, um, right. I'm a blurter. Um, I, it was 4,700 square feet per building. Yeah. So it's two stories. So it's going to be like the trade towers from Main Street looking back at those. So I'm just hoping. Less, less than 35 feet. So our height limit is 35 feet in the city. So any of the, I don't, I, he can answer the question when he gets back that's tell you what height the building is going to be. You never set my clock. So. <laughs> so the other thing is, um, when, when we, they decided to go a central business district on our street, um, I never really got... Um, so that they came in with uh, a comprehensive plan four years ago? No, I, years ago? we hosted a meeting. You actually came to it at oh, the yeah, church. church. Um, but I, I never really got the vibe or the style or what we were searching for. So you said the San Antonio River District, which of course I, I Googled. But I'm just wondering. Yeah. So we have an architectural overlay that's uh, for the CBD that's in our system, um, and we can email that to you so you have it. So if I can that. Google, if I can look at it, I will. Star code, or start, start the Stars website. Go to the planning and zoning, and it's in there. Okay. It shows you the document that talks about what the uh, architectural overlay. So when when we go through the plan, the um, Design review, that's what they're going to look at and look at the building and make sure it complies with that architectural overlay. Good. Which is a mountain modern thing. So a lot of times when I look at buildings, they do something really uh, tricky on the front. It looks good, but around the back, it's like vinyl siding. So I'm just hoping that they can continue the design so whatever we're looking at from Main Street is visually appealing no, to us. I, I understand. We'll have to answer that when he gets cool. back. Cool. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, Time. Your time is now over there. Oh, I still have more time. <laughs> Where's Ryan at? Is he up in here? As soon as you ask questions, it's all off. <laughs> Don't change it yet. Okay, Miss Susan. Susan Avis, 210 South Main Street. Um, as the previous speaker spoke, um, I would just say that as Star continues to grow and more commercial space continues, to impact primarily residential neighborhoods. My sincere hope is that this council 
will be sensitive to the residents that surround the project and from excessive night light, night lighting. Additionally, that these projects would be required to install significant landscaping so that the neighbor's view is not into like a big cement fortress. Um, that was a question I had, what is the height of the building? And if we could get the dimensions on what, what the size of the, um, the 4,700 square foot, what that, what that is length and width would be helpful to me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Is Mickey? Ms. Mickey, is that right? Okay. Yes. All right, Ms. Mickey. Yes. So is uh, is it okay to, to leave the state. microphone? What? Yes, take your name and address. First. Mickey Openshaw. I'm at 1759 North Brandon, but 809. So, so hang on, you got to stay that's there. That's my mom's house. Oh, that's your mom's house, yes. right? And so right to the north, south, east, west? It's 809. It's like the pasture that backs up to this. Right. Oh, right there. Got yeah, you. that's got my you. mom. And I'm here on her behalf. She's 88, and she's like, I'm not going. So, um, but her concern also is the lighting. You know, what's going to be glaring in her windows of her house that she has lived in for 65 years, and um, and also how does it look? So I'm I'm wondering, your two buildings. It looks like from the site plan that you're gonna have one basically butted up to the back of the property, like to my mom's fence. Yeah, right there, that, that is the eastern property line, yep. Okay, and so is there like a buffer there? Or are we just like butted up to that building or is there some landscaping for our cows to eat on your side of the fence? Or, you know, <laughs> what does that look like um, of the parking spaces as people pull into those additional parking spaces? You know, do their lights just shine in my mom's family room sort of thing? So just kind of getting a visual of how that's going down. Are you building the building them simultaneously? Or the back one's going in first, then you're tearing down the front house, and the front one's going in, and kind of what, what that looks like sort of thing. All right, thank you, Ms. Mickey. I appreciate it. So that was good. So we'll have, he, he can come up and answer these questions. Clint, there's nobody else that signed up. Thank you. Um, well, I can address all three of your questions, or one of your questions for all three of you on <clears throat> the lighting. So, I mean, we do have to comply with the City of Stars lighting ordinance for um, for access, for easement, for parking, for all that stuff. So we do have to have a certain amount of lighting. We do uh, also anticipate to have full cutoffs on our lighting, which basically means that they shed down, they don't shed out. And when you see it from the face, you don't see a light, you see the fixture, so it, it shines down. So I don't anticipate lighting being obtrusive or um, having an issue with that. Um, to Heidi's front elevation, currently it's not, um, we don't intend to wrap around the wood grain look on the buildings, but in the end it comes back down to um, the design review, whatever the requirements that get put on us for that. So just real quick, I'm going to just let you know in our design reviews, we typically made them do that on these other new buildings that have been coming through. So I would prepare to do something okay. to give us some of that breakup a little bit sure. on there. Um, uh, Heidi's question on the building height that's uh, 32 feet roughly above uh, finished height or finished ground. Um, to Susan's question on the landscaping, um, I mean, we're going to meet the at least the minimum required by City of Star. Uh, there are going to be some, some grass lawn spaces, some trees. Um, there will be some smaller shrubs you know, around the, the back of the area as well. Um, but I think, I think Heidi's concern, yeah, I think that was on Heidi's, was about building a buffer behind the building. We're not, we're not planning to do that currently. Um, we're just going to have the back of the building and a lawn space with some trees, but not necessarily a large buffer of trees. So um, the, tree. the, the gray part is like lawn and trees. Okay, and then um, I think Susan asked the size, the footprint of the building. The footprint is 50 feet, which should be go north to south, and 47 feet, which would go east to west on each building. Um, for Mickey, um, the rear of the building was based on the required setback 
uh, for residential behind, which is 15 feet off the rear or the east property line on this. Um, this parking space light issue, uh, Mickey, I appreciate that input. Um, that didn't occur to me. Um, so I think what we would do is um, the parking spaces on the east property you're talking about, mm -hmm. we'll build um, probably a four foot wall to where it will block the lights from shedding all the way through to the east. Okay. So that, I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, and then, and then building, um, I think you asked if we're building a simultaneous or one after the other or building one, knocking the house down. Our current plan is to build the furthest east building. Um, the next one, if, if it is going to work for us, we'll build the next one to the west. And I don't have a time frame or a current reason to remove the house um, unless we, we find that there's a, a better suited purpose for that front of the property. Okay. So on that, just real quick, stay up here real quick. So on that back buffer, it's a 15 foot landscape buffer basically? Minimum. Minimum, right? So that has two trees at least, I mean, it's gonna have to follow our code with a number of trees and stuff like that, right? Okay. And I have grass and shrubs back there as the buffer between the two properties, just to be clear. Sure, I, I mean, I, I may be incorrect. I thought that was um, street property, not... Well, I mean, but it's 15 foot. I mean, we're gonna probably want some sort of, I can, I, I, just knowing yeah. folks up here, probably some trees and stuff planted along the back side there to create some break up, I guess, a little bit. Sure. You know, and what kind of trees, that's, that's up to you guys to figure out, right? But... Uh, Makes sense. Yeah. So, any questions of Mr. Clant? Mr. Mayor, this is your time, yes, sir. Would you be willing to make that a six-foot fence where they're parking straight in? Thank That's you. a great idea, sir. Sure. Just bump it up from that. Uh, Thank you. So jack up trucks and uh, start <laughs> trucks. <laughs> the top. Good idea. It is or, Idaho. Or crane. It is Idaho. Yeah, it is Idaho. It is Idaho. Okay. Any further questions of Clint? Council Nielsen, before I have sit down. No, I don't have any at this time. Okay. Council, Councilwoman? No, Anybody I'm, do you have questions? No, I'm, I'm You're good? Okay. Councilwoman, Councilman Hershey? I. We're, we're, we're all right. Good. So that is, that is all you have any staff has a comment real quick before I let you sit down. Mr. Mayor, Council, keep in mind this is a conditional use permit or conditional use permit and a rezone. So you will have a development agreement. So if there are some uses that you find uh, undesirable, you can prohibit those as a condition of approval, for example, a bar or a restaurant, uh, auto repair or something like that. Just keep that in mind. I wanted the, the applicant to be up there in case you want to ask him. Well, so just, but, okay, this, go, your, this is your time to do this. this. So, to go okay. along with that, I mean, do we just follow what Star Student Water is saying? Anything that requires a grease trap is not allowed to use? I mean, because we can't allow a use that if there's a grease trap not being put in until such time that they decide to put it in. But the only uses that would, that would apply to would be a restaurant and a uh, auto repair. Right, uh, restaurant, bar, auto repair, anything that, that does food or grease. Yeah, yeah. Food service. It's, it's, um, yeah, I did go through that list and I, I noted a couple that I thought maybe we should probably can talk about whether or not we think that it would fit. So and, um, I'd love your input also. And sure. So, um, we had a uh, so these are the ones that are currently can you pull up? Can you pull up? permitted. The uh, the permitted uses in the CBD. So we can look at it. So they are a bar, a brewery, um, laundry slash dry cleaning, pawn shop, restaurant, and retail. And those are ones that stood out to me um, personally. And then conditionally, um, you'd have to come back if if somebody wanted to open a minor vehicle repair shop. Um, we'd have to like approve that use, and then not allowed uh, is the major vehicle repair. I, I mean, I would like to keep um, as many uses available that the city of Star currently allows for this parcel. Um, the things that I have currently um, taken off the list is anything with a grease trap, and that's just something that um, between city um, water and sewer that we talked about just as a way to help me get this property to develop on it. I don't have any 
current people looking to lease that would be something like a bar or um, auto minor auto repair or things like that but I, I definitely don't want to shoot myself in the foot if it's a an approved use for the city of star by taking it off on this approval yeah and you know when i when i looked at the um like just the appearance of the building mm -hmm. to me it like first thought was uh like a wholesale type business would be in there um, like some sort of like maybe it's a small like manufacturer of something um but i i don't even know if the cbd allows that type of use so that I didn't Actually, check for the ones that were not permitted because that might be an issue also. Mr. Mayor, Council, if I can just hang on, Councilman, hang on, Council, sorry. Councilman Nielsen. I'd, I'd be happy to hear Sean's comment. Okay. I was just going to state that the, the P's below the CBD are the principal permitted, and the C's would be conditional use. All the conditional uses would have to come back to you for approval anyway, so if you just look through there. Again, animal care facility would be a conditional use permit. Automotive repair would be a conditional use permit. Um, permitted. Child care over 12 children is a conditional use permit. Um, there aren't really that many that are in the drive through establishment would be a conditional use permit. Uh, school, schools, farmers markets, gas station. Hotel, nursery or garden center, Museum. And a parking lot, retirement home, shooting range. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, vehicle, all the vehicle repairs. And but condition use just means you just, just, just got to come back. So they have to come back because of the yeah. proposal. Yeah. Everything else is, a, is, is a principal, principally allowed. Principally allowed. Right, vehicle emission testing is not a thing anymore. <laughs> Did you have a question, Councilman Nelson? I, I think I still had the floor, but I was allowing Sean to okay. make a comment. All right, Councilman Nelson. Thank you. So the, the thought that I had on, on this part of the discussion is it appears to me that we're considering this as a rezone with conditional use for the entire property, but really only a portion of the property is being contemplated in the, the use of, of these buildings. And so it if we place a condition of use based on what we see in these buildings, we don't really know what you would come back with on, on the front side of the property. So I feel like it, our consideration should be limited to, to what we know today. But the, excuse me, the, but the reason is for the entire property so the development agreement would go for all the buildings, not just the right ones. But we could say in the development agreement that these two buildings that are presented, you can say whatever you want. Right. Yeah. Right. We we could, but I, I I think I mean it just needs to be part of the consideration here because it may be full, fully allowable and desirable to have a, a light automotive use of where that house is when it's taken down, right? Because of the access off the road, things like that. So if we prohibit that, or if we specifically prohibit a restaurant, then which may also be really nice to have right there off the side road. So currently. Star sewer water's restriction on the grease trap, I think, is sufficient. And if we restrict it further, we restrict options um, for that other part of the property. That, that's just thought on that. I appreciate that um, thought because I did not consider that. Uh, thank you. I didn't. I didn't consider that front parcel or that front property um, and the future of it. So I think that's a very good point. If, if you're going to do restrictions, I think you just follow what the source of water says with reef trap. Which is is basically they can't do anything with those facilities unless a grease trap is in. Those facilities, correct. And that was, I think, what you were speaking of is in that front piece of the parcel, it may make sense to have a restaurant. Yeah. Um, and, and just to finish that off, the only conditional use permit we're considering here today is the live work permit. So depending on what the work part of that is in each one of these buildings, we'd have to come back and make sure that it complies with the schedule and perhaps some of the other conditional use you know, areas. Correct. Right, John? Right. Yeah. Okay. Any further questions of Mr. Clant before he sits down? Do you have any? No, I'm good. Okay. Thank you. You're good? I'm comfortable. All right. 
Anything else from staff before Clint sits down? Sean? Okay, thank you, Clint. Thank you, guys. Mayor Chadwick. Councilman Nelson, before we go to deliberation, I, and I don't have any, but I just want to make sure that we don't have any development agreement things that we want to, want to consider. I think there's stuff that we're going to put in. I think stuff like the fence on the back that we talked about. You know, some of the extra landscaping on the back we were talking about with trees, things like that. I think need to go into the development agreement. Yeah, I I, uh, I captured uh, uh, the six foot wall on the east side that was pointed out for headlights, and also uh, I, I wrote enhanced landscaping back there as well, uh, which the design review and all that would capture. Okay. Are you good there, Councilman? Can I, well, can I ask about the, I mean, I, I want to get get it out right now so that if we need to talk to him, he can still come back up. But just on the enhanced landscaping, realizing that these are going to be places where people live also, if we packed that that area, you know, full of trees, then, then essentially, you know, a small family that might live there doesn't have a yard to play in, things like that. So I'm just curious what, can we get specific on that? And, and what's mean strategic for headlights, not not pack it in like a triple canopy forest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you want to let me say like two trees? I mean, what do you? I mean, it's it's, it's, dip, it, it's showing with two trees, right? On there, same thing with the front one is with two trees. I think the wall will be the most important. Right, I, I agree with that. And, and look, I, I don't think we can discount the ability for adjacent property owners to also plan buffering landscape, you know, according to their own desires. Right. Okay. Anything further on, on a development agreement side of that? Do we want to just, uh, what about timing? Uh, like hours of operation? Is that anything that's... Would I do see any need to be concerned with limiting the hours? I personally don't like putting any restrictions that don't need to be placed that are already covered in some other way, shape, or form of ordinance. I mean, these are little. Right. I, I, I can't imagine anything. Well, I can't imagine much. But I can't imagine anything here that if for some reason it ran late, it just wouldn't cause much of a problem. I can see a hair salon, I can see a tax accountant. I don't see anything other than things like that. And especially that grease trap thing. If you don't know what one of those is, just wait till about July and go to any restaurant, ask them to open it for you. I'll take it. It's very faint smell, so you have to be a little hard. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Mayor. All right, hang on. I'm gonna, so it's 7.53. I'm going to close the public hearing. And we're going to move on to Council Deliberations. Mayor Chadwick. Councilman Nielsen. So I, I'm, I'm supportive of this application. I, I did want to say one thing because when I made the comment about adjacent properties being able to put in landscaping, I heard a little bit of buzz in the in the audience. Look, we there's, there's only so many things that we can uh, account for up here. And not every scenario... You know, the, the applicant mentioned that with down lighting and our dark sky ordinance, we, we attempt to address lighting concerns. But the fact is, when somebody sits down in the living room, if there's a street light outside or a light in the neighboring yard, the angle might be such that you see it. And, and so there is opportunity then for, for people to perform their own mitigation. And sometimes those things just happen. Um, having said that, uh, again, in support of the application, I find that it's in compliance with with our, our comprehensive plan in the Central Business District and, and the special rules and considerations we have in that, in that district. Um, I'm satisfied that, that it meets the, the challenge of our zoning ordinance, that the conditions of, of use are, are appropriate, and therefore I'm in favor of it, and I, I move that, um, that we approve this, this application um, with the conditions stated by the City of Star uh, in its uh, we have an ID, ID on that letter. No. Oh. All right, thank you. In this letter dated 6th of February 2024 to the applicant, um, that we also, uh, it, that the applicant also builds a six foot fence uh, with 
purpose of mitigating uh, headlight and another intrusive uh, noise uh, from the back of the, that property. Um, I believe that was all the conditions. I'm looking down the row here. Something about the grease trap, or do we need to not include anything because it's our sewer and water right. doing it? Okay. Okay, hey, that's my motion. Okay, we got a motion. Do we have a second? Uh, Mr. Mary, second that. Okay, we have a motion to second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Hershey. Aye. Aye. Salmonson. Aye. Nielsen. Aye. Okay, that motion carries. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to item 6B. Do uh, you have this information loaded for them, Sean? Huh? Okay. We're going to move on to item 6B, the public hearing for the Frontier Federal Credit Union. Uh, it is 7.56, and we're going to open the public hearing. I'm going to ask uh, council if they have any ex parte contact or communication regarding this project. None. Okay, hearing none, uh, we're going to turn it over to Sean here in just a second. Go ahead, sir. Hey, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you have before you this evening a uh, conditional use permit for Frontier Credit Union. The property is located at 11352 and 11368 West State Street. Total acreage of the property is 0.72 acres, encompassing uh, two parcels. Current zoning of the property is CBD, Senior Business District. Conditional use permit is for the drive through component of, of a financial institution. Uh, which is the credit union. The finance, financial institutions are principally permitted uh, in the Center Business District. Applications re requirements have all been met, including the submittal requirements, agency transmittals, legal notices, and site posting. The application has been reviewed in compliance with the city uh, comprehensive plan and zoning ordinance. Items uh, outstanding uh, include a letter from ITD with the recommendation of removal of the State Street access that's part of the site plan. Staff is recommending uh, approval with conditions. This property is located on the north side of State Street, west of uh, Star Road, and west of the developing Jackson's food store on the corner of Union and State Street. This is the site plan. landscape plan and the uh, applicant has provided elevations <laughs> and this this will go through our design review committee for final approval that's all staff has okay any questions staff all right uh, we'll move on to the applicant uh, state your name and address please sir for the record Uh, Medical Center for Air Gas. I am the 2501 West Pleasanton, Boise, Idaho. I'm the representative for Frontier Credit Union. Can you spell your uh, last name? Uh, it's P R E N D E R G A S T. Okay, thank you. And, uh, okay. Yeah, you can start. I brought in some slides which are a little different than we just looked at. I think things have been updated a bit since. Um, our discussions with PNC and ACHD and ITD. Um, we are representing Frontier Credit Union. A little background on Frontier. They are located in Idaho Falls. Been around about 90 years now. Originally, Eastern Idaho Credit Union um, recently rebranded to Frontier. Um, most of their branches are in Eastern Idaho and they've been moving more into the Treasure Valley. Uh, recently opened up a branch in Meridian and this will be their second um, branch in the Treasure Valley along a lot of different plans to kind of expand. Um, <clears throat> for their small credit union, kind of their focus uh, as a neighborhood credit union, um, locally focused, smaller branches, um, and kind of connecting to the community. Um, 
And looking at the building, I have some slides. So he's trying to get him to pull up. Oh, sure. And I have some printouts if that's helpful uh, as well. I do have some paper. I do have some hard copies. Oh, here we go. Just use the arrows and move it forward. Yeah, we can move it forward a couple slides. This is some, no, you're fine. No. Um, keep going to the kind of um, yeah basic area of scope here. So as was mentioned before, we're um, at 11352 State Street, um, just west of Star Boulevard, in between the oh great, thank you. Uh, in between the Jacksons, the um, forthcoming Jacksons, and the I believe Jersey Mike's uh, to the left, with Union Street uh, to our west, State Street to the south. So a handful of different jurisdictions, ACHD, ITD to the south, ACHD in the alleys and on Union Street. Um, uh, we can move to the next, yeah, this is our, uh, our general site plan. So it's a full service credit union with a drive through, um, roughly 3,000 square feet, um, three drive through lanes and an exit lane to the left, um, about 15 parking stalls, um, and shared access through the Jacksons. Um, so we've been in discussion with them to have a shared access agreement um, through their uh, State Street access. Um, ITD, uh, as was mentioned, um, not enough room for us to have State Street access. So sharing with them, which is fine by us, um, preferable in a way to keep the kind of maintenance on their side. Um, and as you can see here, it's been adjusted in this plan. Um, it is two adjacent parcels, so per speaking with PNZ, we'll be doing a lot line consolidation, um, which we're in the process of doing for the permit application. So this line here is your uh, lot line. So that will be consolidated into one parcel. Um, we can switch. Um, this is a landscape plan, again, a rough landscape plan, and in some ways this might not match up uh, with the site plan. We just had some things have been adjusted, but it should give you a general idea of trees, landscaping, um, permeable pavers here where we need some drainage. We're still working with Civil to figure out drainage needs um, and how we're gonna kind of drain the alley. This is ACHD, so that's gonna need to drain into Union Street. Um, so being in the kind of river plain, um, we'll have a lot of mitigation for drainage that we're gonna kind of need to focus on. And mostly that will be addressed in permeable papers, the plan as of now. Um, yeah, we can move into design um, to the next slide, if that works. Um, quickly, the floor plan, sure. If, um, so yeah, 3,000 square feet. Um, Kind of small floor plan, the idea is to have it pretty open, a lot of glass, a lot of light coming through from the south. Um, again, this is one of their first kind of entrance into the Treasure Valley, so they want it to be kind of a signature building for them. Um, it's in a great location along State Street, um, a lot of traffic, a lot of visibility, so from their standpoint, they want something that's, I want to say, a little elevated from some of their past projects, especially moving to this area. Um, and so we shot for that with the design. Um, kind of the next slide. Um, focusing again, we are in that design overlay district in the central business district. Um, so our focus was to be on kind of that mountain modern aesthetic, um, pitched roofs, uh, wood grain, 
kind of heavier materials. Um, again, a lot of glass and light um, kind of working in and then um, again, connecting to what we saw with some of the other buildings and um, kind of buildings in this area and Eagle and um, again, I think that modern mountain is a good word to describe it, Western aesthetic, but not necessarily old timey for lack of a better word. Um, this is one of our um, renders. This is from State Street looking north uh, through the drive aisle. Um, these are the elevations that are a little different than what um, we submitted for the CEP, just kind of made adjustments um, as, as the design develops, but everything is still within kind of the realm of height limitations, square footage, all of that. Um, some of the materials, um, barn wood, stucco, kind of darker materials and that goes with their branding, which is again, kind of a simpler navy wood aesthetic. Um, again, they have a lot of branches and drigs and in Eastern Idaho and kind of mountain towns. So I think it fits well with what they're doing. Um, that's kind of all I have on, on the design front. Okay, any Thank questions you. of again? Mayor Shelley. Um, Sean, can you go to the site? Um, so I'm curious about the um, travel flow for the drive through. Um, so, can you just explain what that will look like? Have cars using the drive through in and out? Yeah, we had a few different kind of site feasibility models we had with the drive through on each side. Our, our ultimate goal was to have the drive through on the west of the building. So as cars move through, you know, their light is directed towards State Street and not towards the residential properties behind it. Um, again, typically we're going to have that shared access, so most of it is going to move up through State Street, I would assume. I mean, I think we prefer Union, but I've just seemingly with the traffic on State, they would come up through that shared Jackson's access and then down either into parking or through and queue up to the drive aisle and then back down around if, if they need to park. Most likely they would just exit out of the west um, Union Street exit. Okay, and so if they go off Union, Union so you're thinking that the primary access point will be Star Road that has to turn, right? Do they have to go at north of the Star Road and then down the alley? And then I would into the beach. No, there's an access off of Fort Norway, right off of the, yeah. right on the border of the property line there. It's, okay, so it's on that right side where the yeah. Yeah, it's, south arrows yeah, are. There's, there's a valley gutter there. Technically, that's on the Jackson's property, so we'll have to have some kind of shared access agreement. Okay. Um, that but, makes sense. Okay. Yeah. That would be the and assumption. And then, or if they use Union Street, then they'll go in. Would they have to circle around the building and then go into the drive-through and then circle around? Yeah. And I guess they could just. We have enough room. Street. So we have 26 feet to the north of the landscape buffer, which is enough for, for two way if necessary. But I, I mean, I, we would direct traffic to come around to the south of the building. There would probably be arrows, directional arrows to go that way. I don't, I don't know that we'd make it one way. If, but I'm assuming most of the traffic flow coming up Union would come down to the front of the building if they needed to get to the drive through. Okay. Um, and then regarding the stacking or the queue, so I think sure. you were required, required for four, four um, is it queue spots per bank drive window. Is that correct, Sean? I believe it's, and I, I'll have to check, I believe it's four. Yeah, four cars, section, yeah, in the code, um, four cars per drive-up window. So then, so you have three, like three bays? Is that, is that like three? Three bays, one ATM, and two like manual, I don't call it tubes, for lack of a better word, that go into the bank branch yeah. for the teller to access checks or cash or anything that's coming in. So, and one is a dedicated ATM. And that'll be against the building. 
So, if, yeah, if you're looking at the drive well, the one connected to the building will be the ATM. The two further away will be the pneumatic system that carries those containers into the into the bank branch. Okay. And so if you're required for four spots, is that so people would wait, like, in the drive lane? That's how I understand it. They would wait in that drive lane and then separate out into specific aisles as needed. Okay. Um, that's how we've... When there's enough it. width there for like another car to get by, right? Well, and you have the alley right adjacent to the north of that for the traffic to flow back and forth as well. We added enough, tw again, enough width, 26 feet roughly between the top of the buffer and then our property line. Although that's gonna, we are gonna pave into the alley as well for ACHD. Um, there may be landscape buffer in between, but there should be enough room. If with 26 feet, that's a basic double drive aisle, so you should have enough room if you need to get out from behind that queue and just exit, yeah. that you should be able to get around that car with enough space. Okay. I guess my concern was just to make sure if there was, you know, I mean, we're a growing town. So, you know, yep. you're, and hopefully your bank is super busy and and so that we have enough space in the drive through for, you know, other traffic to get around the site. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, I think. When I'm looking at, I'm just, when I look at it, you have access off of the alley, plenty of room for people to get around, and then they can get around by the garbage can and come around too, so. Yeah, the alley, I mean, we've kind of, Again, not knowing, again, with, speaking with ACHD, we tried to kind of keep as much within our property, but I, I would assume the alley would also get a fair amount of use for and that. The alley's a public, public way anyway, it's a public right away. But we didn't want to design it with that assumption that we would have the alley as an exit, so we added space just to the, to the north there. Yeah, you know, the drive through, I mean, the, you know, the ATM you can access at any time. The hours of the bank, I believe, will be till 6 p.m. at the latest. It depends on the branch. I know they're either 5 or 6 in eastern Idaho. My, I would assume it wouldn't go past 6 p.m. Um, ATM you could access after hours. Um, which I think is pretty typical. It'll, again, it'll be on the outside of the building. Um, but again, I think... will have, like, low impact to the neighbors. I hope so. Yeah. And again, I think the thinking was having, if there are lights that come in at night, having that directed to the south towards State Street is preferable to having cars coming up in the other direction if you were to flip it to the other side of the building. Um, Got it. Okay. Thank you. Good. Yep. Okay. Hey, any further questions? Councilman Wheeler? Yeah. Uh, Sean, could you go to page nine, please? That's the one. Yeah, it, yeah, this rendering, it shows that flat from the building to presumably what is State Street on the left of that. Yes, I'm sorry. And elevation-wise, are you going to leave it at that curb level, or are you sinking it? The, the building to the west of there is below the grade, and that's, a, that's no. been less well-received from my point of view. Yeah, the idea is to have it uh, above grade. We looked at that building because I believe they have a, a retention wall and then kind of cuts down. Um, we, our plan is to raise that sidewalk and it, it's higher I think that property is a bit higher than the Jersey Mike's property um, but it'll need to be infilled and, and raised up to that level a ton of people cutting down and raise up I was just curious what your plan was so I could see in my brain where you were headed with that what's the rule Ryan Morgan isn't it supposed to be at a level in the center or something through the center of the highway so we don't currently have anything in our code for the elevation of a building. We are putting in our new code updates that the elevation of the building, the finished floor, should match the center line of the adjacent 
um, highway or sure. adjacent main roadway. Just put that in the condi as a condition. Mayor Chadwick. Yes, sir. Okay. You're saying that it should match it or be at least a minimum and they can go above if they want it? Correct. Okay. At a minimum should should match that elevation of the major roadway next to it. Thank you. Yeah, I just didn't want it to be lower done. No, that I'm good with up. The reason yeah. why it's going in the code is we discovered that when that building went in, we had no idea that that, that was going to be an issue on that. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Any further questions of the applicant? Mayor Chadwick. Council Member. Um, so I did see in the ACHC's report, so uh, you'll be installing sidewalks along Union, and I think there's a gap. Is there a gap there on State Street? You have to no. fill in also, or oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. they have to yeah. do that sidewalk along there too. Yeah, yeah so to so the attached to the Jackson's property to the east. Yeah. So Prairie CHG is a 36 foot, so they'll be actually parking. It'll be expanded that Union Street, and then they'll be parking to the west of that detached sidewalk. So I, I, it's a 36 foot, so two lanes and then parking, and then a sidewalk. So I think. So this should be updated. I believe that what we said to CP didn't have that change yet, but it'll be about an eight foot buffer. I think we had like 16 before, and now it's eight between Union Street and the sidewalk. It's a little shorter. Um, but that's part of the agreement he has to develop that. And then we need to tie that in for ITD with the, because they put in a curb now, which is back. So we'll need to take that curb out and then rebuild the curb and apply for that change. There's also an entrance to the previous residential property on State Street that's a curb cut that we'll need to fill in. Um, and that's an ITD's kind of report. So I don't know if you can see it here, but. Um, so there'll be curb better and sidewalk along there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. for the long answer to your question, yes. Okay, any further questions of the applicant? Okay, hearing none. Thank you, Sean. Do we have anybody signed up? Okay, is there anything final you want to say? Or anything that the council wants to discuss with the applicant? I think I'm good. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. Okay. I am going to, it's 818. I'm going to close the public hearing. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not closing the hearing. Closing the public hearing. Sorry. I'm going on to council deliberations. Mayor Chadwick. Councilman Nielsen. I'm going to kick us off. Okay. So, um, love, love the design. I think it's going to look great in our downtown corridor. Um, I find that the, that the site plan and, the, and uh, the use of the property and everything is consistent with our comprehensive plan. It's consistent with our zoning ordinance. The, Additional use permit request for a drive through for a financial institution. Um, I feel like that this is in a, an appropriate location for such a, a building with that sort of use. So I'm supportive of the conditional uh, use there. And I didn't hear us come up with any additional conditions beyond which were already noted in the, you know, the staff report. Uh, and so I'm going to move that we approve this application. Okay. Second. We have a Motion and a second by Councilman uh, Wheelock. Any further discussion? Do we need to include the information, Sean, uh, uh, as a condition about making sure the site's up at what Morgan said? Mayor Chadwick. Councilman Nielsen. I'll go ahead and, and amend my motion to include that the, 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 the grading of the building, the location of that building, will at least be on par or a match with the center line of the road. Uh, the same with the sidewalk. Okay, thank you. You amend your second? Second. Amend my second. Okay, we got a amended motion, amended second from Council Wheelock. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Hershey. Aye. Wheelock. Aye. Salmonson. Aye. Nielsen. Aye. Awesome. Well, welcome yeah, to the star. Welcome to the star. Looks good. Okay, can you pull up uh, 7A for me? Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Talk soon. All right. Okay. Get the truck. Yeah. Just so I can have the information that there's something to talk about. Seven eight. Yeah, please. Okay. 
please. All right, this item here is we are presenting in front of you the option to purchase a star sewer and water vehicle. They rotate them out every five years. This is a Ford F-150 regular cab. Uh, it's for $13,000. It's got 58,000 plus miles on it. It's a white truck. It's got an emergency uh, signal thing on the top. It's going to be utilized for our new building inspector as we're going through that process. Uh, we have we need to provide a vehicle for that for them. Um, so I'm looking for you guys to approve us to purchase this. Um, Star Sewer and Water is a great partner to buy these from. We know exactly what's wrong and gone on with these vehicles versus buying them on the surplus. And it's a great price, I think. So. Mr. Mayor. Any questions? Yes, sir. I make a motion that we buy the 2019 Ford F-150 regular cab four-wheel drive for 13000 from Star Sewer and Water. And tell them thank you. Okay. Uh, we have a motion. We have a second. I second that. We have a motion second from Councilman Hershey. Any further discussion? Mayor Chadwick. Councilman. You know, I'm going to ask where the money's coming from. It's going to come out of the uh, budget of the uh, the uh, planning zoning building area because we're moving. Remember, we're moving to bring in our inspectors in house, which is going to save us about three hundred thousand okay. a year. Mayor Chadwick. Councilman Nielsen. Do we have a fair market value on this vehicle? Yeah, it's a, it's the thirteen thousand. It's the fair market value. The, so there. if you were to sell that private property or private private sale, that's that's what it would sell for. Right? Or more, or higher value. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I figured that. I, I'm just wanting, perhaps for the record or the public listening, this this feels like it's almost a rubber stamp, and that's because we all feel it's a good deal, but. You know, if we had numbers to provide as part of our public record, I think that'd be great. Those are the he so uh, Hank gets a number from the dealers on what what that market value is um, on there, and that's where he comes up with that. So, so Brian Morgan, city engineer, and ask for you. What? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Go ahead. But also the district engineer. That number came because when Hank goes to take a vehicle, buy a new vehicle, he takes that vehicle. And that's basically the, the trade in value that the dealership would give us. Thank you. Okay. So we do the roll call already? So it's trade in value, not retail value. Right. Correct. We're getting a better deal on it. Okay, any further questions? Anyone? No. Okay. Roll call? Hershey. Aye. Elon. Aye. Salmons. Aye. Nielsen. Aye. Thank you very much. Moving on to item 7B, the executive session. Entertain a motion to go to executive session. Please list the reason. Go to F. Mayor Chowick. Councilman Nielsen. So, right before I do that, I just want to again call out that what a wonderful place the city of Star is. It would be easy for Star Sewer and Water just to do that trade in. Yep. But knowing that, that we can benefit from that, they don't. They pass that along to us, and that's because of good relationships and, and working together over the years. So, Awesome to be part of a town where politics is uh, is the way it is. Yep. Thank you, Mayor. I, I move that we enter executive session under Idaho Code seventy four two zero six F to communicate with legal counsel for the public agency to discuss the legal ramifications of and legal options for pending litigation or controversies not yet being litigated but imminently likely to be litigated. Okay. You have a motion. We have a second. Second. We have a motion and second by Councilman Solomonson. Uh, roll call. Rishi. All right, Aye. Aye. Salmons. Aye. Nielsen. Aye. Hey, it's 8 uh, 23. We're going to go into executive session, so I need folks to leave and we'll put everything on you.